Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new Rhino user webinar. I am Guillermo Varela from Magnil Europe. I, I want to introduce today's speaker, Andre Janota. Today, he's going to show us the possibilities of the implementation of parametric design and automation into daily processes of bridge design and practical use cases of how Rhino and Grasshopper can be used for bridge design, drawings production, and BIM models with the possibility to automate selected workflows. Please remember that you can ask questions in the chat and we can answer them in the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Also remember the webinar is being recorded and we will upload it to YouTube tomorrow. Thank you again, Andre, for accepting our invitation and please start with the presentation if you're ready. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so thank you for the invitation for the webinar. Uh, and thank you for uh, uh, thank you for the attendance to this webinar. I hope it will help you help you to uh, learn some new things, possibilities. So uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, present uh, uh, the authors of uh, the presentation a little bit more. My name is Andre Nota. I work as a bridge designer in the Prague office of AFRE Czech Republic, and uh, I'm also responsible for implementing. Uh, 3D and uh, BIM workflows uh, into our daily daily tasks and daily job. Uh, I use uh, C Sharp and Python programming languages to achieve this goal, uh, and I will be the speaker today. And uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Mikhail Marvan, is a very young and talented engineer. He works for AFRI uh, for more than four years. He uh, generally do the same thing. Uh, which means uh, bridge, bridge design and also um, uh, BIM development. And he's uh, responsible for two uh, projects uh, in uh, year 2022 and 2023, uh, which won the local check round of uh, Tecla BIM Awards. Uh, mostly, a project were mostly focused on parameterization of bridge design. And uh, uh, during the next year, 2024, you will be uh, able to vote for his project in the Global Tecla BIM Awards. Uh, so that's about the authors. And uh, I would like also to introduce our work and our company. AFRI Czech Republic uh, is a consultancy company which focused uh, on uh, all the fields of civil engineering from the uh, transportation and buildings and also environment and so on. Uh, we work, as I said, in a Prague office, uh, uh, and we focus on designing of uh, concrete uh, bridges, mostly road bridges. And I have to say that uh, we, uh, on most of the project, we focus on, let's say, medium-sized bridges, which means uh, from one up to five uh, spans. Uh, I think the, the length varies from, let's say, 20, uh, meters up to uh, 150. Uh, and sometimes we have opportunity to uh, design uh, larger bridges. For example, uh, below we can see a nine span uh, uh, girder box uh, uh, bridge, but it's not so often and it's, it's, it's uh, quite a rare project. But uh, we don't feel that doing medium size or, or smaller bridges is uh, something uh, which uh, uh, cannot be honest uh, because these bridges uh, in these bridges we know that there are finite uh, finite um, a type of a finite number of types of bridges and also uh, finite number of uh, cross section which we generally use so we feel that it's a good environment for automatization so uh, uh, why we seek the automatization as our uh, field and uh, why we seek that it's something we should focus on? Well, generally there, there are uh, two uh, groups of tasks which we do during the bridge design. First one is, uh, is called, or I, I call it a general bridge design. That means that we need to decide what will be uh, the bridge, how the bridge will look like, how many spans, length, width, with what will be the static scheme. And we do this uh, task uh, mostly during the early uh, stage of the project. Uh, sometimes we need to uh, design multiple variants and present them to the uh, client. And then uh, one is chosen and detailed design is performed. So we, uh, we can, let's say, 
alter all the variants with the parametric design or parametric approach. And second group is a specific task, which we know that uh, they are, uh, they, they need to be done on every project or we do this task, uh, let's say on everyday basis and why not to automate them. Uh, moreover, we feel that there is a less and less uh, skilled uh, people and rich engineers. Uh, we have problem with finding new people. So it's a general problem and uh, the projects are more demanding and uh, there is a more and more work. So we think that with uh, automatization and parametrization, we can speed up our work and uh, mitigate the chance to create errors. And also we need to meet new clients criteria because uh, building information modeling and, and CD uh, world is coming to us. Uh, what is our workflow? Uh, well, we created a, a workflow which where the grasshopper and rhino is something like a hub and all other things are connected to uh, the grasshopper and rhino. But uh, I have to emphasize that uh, all the projects start with some, some inputs and we are not in a, in a bubble where we can do or design things uh, standalone. We need to cooperate with other disciplines and uh, we need to get the inputs from, from uh, 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 different, uh, different designers and we don't know which software they work in. So we uh, stick to open formats like IFC and uh, Land XML because they are same for every, every uh, software. And uh, we know that most of the softwares are able to, to export them and produce them and we can read them. Uh, we can read them because we created our own uh, importer to create or to import uh, data from this format to Rhino. And then there is a phase where, where we perform the bridge design. Uh, there are two ways, uh, it depends on the engineer and its uh, ability or, or his ability to, uh, to work with uh, Grasshopper and Rhino. Uh, the engineer can design the bridge uh, manually in Rhino or he can use the better parametric way uh, with Grasshopper. And the last part of our workflow is uh, outputs. Uh, th this is what uh, 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 is the result of the project. Uh, we have three types of outputs. First uh, are the general drawings and for example, the drawings of form work. Uh, they are mandatory of, on each project. And we decided uh, to use Rhino to create drawings because if we have the model, we can uh, benefit from the model and, and create or, or uh, produce the drawing from the model. It's uh, still a lot of manual work, but it's better than, uh, than uh, exporting uh, uh, the model to other softwares and creating the drawings there. If we need to reinforce uh, bridge, different bridge parts, we use Tecla structures uh, together with Grasshopper. And I think uh, Tecla or Grasshopper Tecla Lifelink is a, a very well known um, uh, plugin. And uh, finally, when the project uh, is uh, together with the requirements for building information modeling, then we need to also deliver the IFC file. And uh, again, if we have the model in Rhino, then why not to export uh, IFC uh, right from the Rhino? So we create our own exporter and we have uh, much better control over the data we deliver. So that's our workflow. And uh, we have to keep in mind that even if we use, uh, even if you use um, Grasshopper visual scripting or, or, or textual scripting or do the or uh, do the structure and model manually, it always ends in real world. Uh, it always ends on site, and we need to do it for the people on site and for the real world, not for the virtual world uh, in which we mostly uh, uh, live in our uh, daily, daily work. So uh, that was a short intro and let's get to a uh, practical part of this presentation. Um, this presentation will be uh, divided into four sections. First, uh, we'll be focused on 3D models. A second section will be focused on concrete detailing. 
Uh, third one will be about the drawings. And the last and the shortest one will be about research and development uh, because uh, it's, it's a keystone to our workflows. We uh, create or we uh, code our own components which are used to, uh, to uh, fulfill our requirements. Uh, and uh, you will see that these components are present in, in previous three sections. So let's get to uh, first section, why we do or why we feel that um, automatization uh, of uh, uh, 3D models is, is the path. It's probably the, the, the most important part of uh, our work because we uh, need to create bridge models uh, simply and fast. If we are able to do so, then we can coordinate over the model uh, with other designers uh, over the 3D model. And then uh, after the coordination, we can uh, create the drawings and, and 2D, 2D deliveries from the model. Uh, if we are able to coordinate uh, over the 3D model, then there is a less uh, a lesser possibility that we will do some rework after the drawings are created because it's it's the most uh, time consuming part of of our work. Moreover, uh, it's much uh, funnier to uh, create uh, models and playing with grasshopper than than drawing clients and doing and doing. Uh, uh, drawings. So uh, let's get to the first uh, live demo. Uh, I set the split screen here. Uh, so what will be our goal? Uh, what will be our goal? Uh, our goal is to create a, a simple bridge with uh, multiple spans and a bridge will consist of a superstructure and also a substructure uh, we will create just the piers because they are uh, uh, easier and abutments are much uh, harder to, to create parametrically and we don't have so many time to, to show everything. But uh, the bridge will be fully parametric. And as you can see, uh, our Grasshopper script is uh, quite simple. There are a few components. So uh, let's let's get to, to the wor to work. Uh, I will turn off everything. Uh, in the green groups, we can see that there are inputs. Uh, mostly they are numeric, uh, uh, numeric inputs uh, regarding the dimensions of the bridge. But uh, one input needs to be uh, taken from the, from the outside and it's the alignment uh, because we connect our bridges to the alignment and alignment is provided from the road or rail designer. So uh, we easily ask for the XML file and then we have our workflow and this workflow uh, import the alignment curve. First, we need, uh, we need to select what is the proper alignment name. And then if we choose the alignment, we need to choose the profile name. It's, it's, uh, this workflow is based on how the alignment is written in the XML file. Then we uh, set the step for, uh, for uh, final curve calculation. And if everything is uh, correctly chosen, then we, uh, we run the importer. Uh, it will take uh, some time, but after a while you can see that we uh, import a, a curve. This curve is, is in 3D space and it is it corresponds to the alignment. Uh, this is a very important step for us because uh, it is the uh, foundation of our bridge design. And what we need to do here is to do the check if the import was uh, correctly done. There are three types of check. First one is uh, to flatten the curve into the X, Y plane. Uh, and then measure the length of the curve and uh, measure or, or uh, 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 go to the XML file and see if these uh, lengths are similar because sometimes they uh, do not correspond and then we know that something went wrong. Uh, this is the first 
uh, check. The next check uh, is a uh, little bit uh, uh, a little bit complicated. And uh, uh, if we run the script again, and we break the curve into the uh, Rhino, uh, we can turn on the curvature graph. And you can see that uh, there is a white curvature graph. This tells us where are the straight lines, where are the trans transitional curves, where are circular curves. If we have a straight line, then the curvature, then the curva curvature is uh, uh, zero. If there is a transitional curve, then there is a, uh, um, Transition from one uh, one curve to a, uh, one curvature to another value of curvature. If there is a circle part of the curve, then we have a constant curvature. So, if everything went uh, according to the plan, the curvature graph is smooth, as you can see. Sometimes there are errors at the ends of uh, the alignment, or or or. Sometimes uh, there is there are errors between the different part of the curve, but uh, we know that our bridge will be somewhere in the middle. So this is what uh, doesn't uh, what we care of. Uh, so this is the second check, and the last one is if we if we uh, write down any coordinates of of uh, of selected points on the curve. And we we uh, we ask our, uh, we we go to the longitudinal profile of the road. Then we need uh, is focused on the elevation of, of different um, points on on the curve. So that's the checks we need to do. And if everything is correct, we can go uh, to. We can go to next part, and uh, in next part we need to define what uh, will be the length and position of of our bridge. Uh, simply, we need to define uh, the superstructure. Uh, so, uh, basically, we uh, define the stationing of the first axis, and then we define different length of the spans, and we define elevations of. Uh, 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 elevations of uh, peer foundation, uh, and we have a component which creates the axis uh, on the on the alignment. And we can play with it. For example, if we uh, need to move the bridge uh, by by uh, 200 meters, we can do it. We can remove uh, some some spans and, and supports and so on. And then we divide uh, our then we divide our axis into peer axis and abutment axis, and we will work uh, just with the peer axis. Uh, uh, the trick here is that if we know what we need, we can code it. If we know what we will need in the future, in the in the, in the next uh, in, in some some point at the script, we code a component which uh, uh, simply creates the geometry and also auxiliary outputs, which help us in, in the future. We will see it in the in, in, uh, uh, next, next uh, parts. And what is also important to say that it's quite hard sometimes to orient in the 3D model without any nodes. So we create a, a components which help us to orient in the model. For example, this one, we can name all the uh, supports and we can also name the di directions uh, if we want to, for example, create a bridge from Prague to uh, London, we can easily uh, modify it. And we have, uh, sorry, we have a bridge for, uh, we have a bridge uh, from Prague to, to London. So that's, uh, that's some trick how to orient better, better in our model. But uh, let's get back to a superstructure. A substructure. Uh, well, yeah. So uh, how the superstructure is done? Well, as I said earlier, we have a 
finite number of uh, bridge types we can or we usually design so we know what are typical cross section of our superstructure so we code it uh, the cross section uh, and parameterize the cross section uh, in the way we need so we have for example a um, slab deck which is uh, fully fully parametric and then the trick is that we create a as many cross section as we need. If the cross section of superstructure is uh, constant, then we uh, need uh, one or two uh, cross section. If there are some uh, tapered parts, then we need to define all the critical uh, cross section. Uh, and we orient this uh, cross section. Uh, we orient this cross section over uh, the alignment according to predefined stationing. At first, we uh, slightly prolong the uh, superstructure. And in the next step, we cut the superstructure according to the real end and uh, start stationing of uh, the bridge. Like we do so, it's because sometimes we need to design a skewed bridge. And if we use uh, cutting planes, then we need to have a longer uh, longer um, uh, rep to cut, so we can uh, easily uh, set the, the end and start a skew angle. But let's get the perpendicular bridge. Uh, so we have a superstructure, and uh, we know that in the future we will need a bottom bottom uh, uh, surface of the superstructure because we will connect um, uh, bearings and piers to to this uh, surface, so we uh, simply separate and create our own uh, um, output. So that's the superstructure, and let's go to uh, piers. First, we create a pier foundation. We know the position of the pier because we have the axis defined, and we have uh, uh, points on the axis where the center of the pier foundation will be located so that's that's our input and we uh, simply create a boundary representation which represents the um, peer foundation it, it's its shape is quite simple it's a rectangular shape with slope at the top top surface but again uh, we have uh, we uh, the outputs are the foundations and all, we also will need uh, bottom outline, because bottom outline will be used uh, to create a ground preparation and to define uh, the uh, piles. And we we will also need a, we will also need a top curve or the center line of the pier foundation. And uh, on this curve, the piers will be oriented and, and located. So we uh, we predefine this component, and the outputs are. Uh, with, with this auxiliary outputs. So we have a peer foundation. And uh, again, ground preparation is, uh, is, is simple in its shape. And we use, we use a base curve. Then the base curve is offset it and extruded in a proper uh, direction. So we created uh, the ground pre uh, preparation. And then let's go to the piles. Again, same same um, uh, scheme in piles. We input an outline curve, which is the bottom outline of the pier foundation. Then we need to define what's the diameter and the length of the pier. It, I think it, it's very clear. And then number of piles in each direction, so we can uh, we can change the uh, number of piles in each direction. Uh, if we need to change the number of piles or the length of the pile in each uh, peer foundation, we simply alter the input. And uh, uh, instead of one item, we add, uh, we add a list of uh, values. And we can, we can influence uh, uh, not all the piles, but all uh, each one of the group of piles. So that's how to keep uh, everything as, as we need. And the 
And the last uh, part is about the peer uh, uh, peers. Well, uh, peers will be located on the peer foundation, and we will uh, we we say that we will design the uh, the uh, rectangle uh, peers with chamfered chamfered edges uh, corners. So. Uh, inputs are, uh, I think, clear. It's the length, width, height, and chamfers. Uh, but we also need to define the position of the peer, and we also need to define the height bit because height uh, is not something we would like to uh, uh, set. I think it's something we would like to calculate because we know the uh, elevation of peer foundation, and we know uh, the position of uh, or, or dimensions of sub substructure, sub sub substructure. So first, we need to calculate the heights. Uh, it's a part of the script where we can. It's a part of the script where we can uh, define the center point of each uh, peer, and then uh, we project this point on a uh, bottom surface of our superstructure and we uh, calculate the Z differences between these points. It's uh, very simple, but uh, because we are engineers, uh, we uh, would like to have the heights uh, in a nice numbers. For example, we uh, generally design the heights uh, rounded to a decimal, one decimal point and the left uh, left uh, space is, uh, or, or the, the uh, remainder of the space is left to the bearing. So we know what will be the height for the bearing because it's 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 written in our check uh, codes, and we know that we need to uh, round down this height. If we decide to, for example, round down to two decimal places, we simply simply modify this output and we can see that, that the result is rounded to centimeters, but uh, let's uh, stick to one decimal, decimal place. So that's the trick regarding uh, the calculation of height. And after this, we can simply create the peers. Uh, peers are uh, done uh, as again with our, with our component and uh, inputs are uh, the dimensions, the uh, let's say the axis of the peer or, or or peer foundation, and we need to set what is the position from the edge of peer foundation, uh, and sometimes uh, uh, we uh, need to create a symmetrical peers so. Uh, we set a, a rule that if the value is uh, positive, then it's from the start of the uh, center line of the peer foundation. If it's negative, then it's from the, the other side. Uh, that's how we can uh, easily create a symmetric uh, structures. And if we need to add another peer, we can just add a number and we have another, another peer or, uh, or for example, move uh, the, the left one and so on. So that's, that's uh, how to keep the structure uh, symmetric and parametrical. And the last thing is uh, about the bearing. Well, uh, bearing is something uh, what we need to design, but we don't know who will do the bearings and what what uh, uh, company will deliver the bearings. Uh, so we need just to design the load bearing capacity uh, of the bearing and uh, also uh, the direction of movement in the bearing uh, and, and then uh, design the peers dimensions to fit, fit the, uh, the bearing uh, uh, dimensions. But we, we don't know the exact dimensions of the bearing until the uh, the the bridge is is uh, built. So we created a, a little bit different approach. We take all the data we have from from the previous projects, uh, and we know that there are different type of bearings, and they are uh, uh, you can find on the web 
uh, typical dimensions of this building. So we created a SQL uh, database and connected this database to our components. So we have a uh, uh, lot of uh, building types uh, with different uh, uh, load building capacity. And we can select which one is, is the proper one for us. And it will create automatically the bearing with, uh, with uh, um, uh, typical dimensions of, of the bearing. So if I turn on the uh, if I turn on the script, well, uh, it's, oh, it's wrong here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't expected. <laughs> No, oh, so so that, that there's some mistake uh, I, I uh, didn't foresee. Uh, sorry for that. I, I will show you uh, later how it it works. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's that's the important and very interesting part of this uh, workflow. So no, okay. So uh, buildings will be shown uh, afterwards. Sorry for that. So that's that's how we. Uh, create our bridges and uh, finally we can uh, we can color our geometry uh, we can color our, our geometry uh, I will I will just delete uh, this this and turn this on uh, yeah, we can color our geometry. Uh, there is a component which, according to the uh, names of the layers, reads uh, its its color, and then we can uh, simply uh, simply uh, we can color our com uh, our uh, ah sorry we can color the the result. Uh, what is important to say that the, uh, the structure is fully parametric. We can, for example, delete another uh, uh, support uh, or add uh, multiple spans, and it all it all changes as uh, we need to. Or we can, for example, uh, do the substructure a little bit uh, thicker. Uh, I think what is also important to say that this is a quite easy script, not so many components, and uh, we can alter different uh, bridge types. And uh, if we do this uh, script, uh, the first one who will be doing this is, it, it takes a few hours, but then we can copy from one project to another project and we can simply reuse it. So what is also our goal? And let's get uh, back to uh, the presentation. Well, we don't uh, use Grasshopper only for general bridge design. We also uh, use it for as a uh, 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 more specific task. For example, when we design a, a pre-stressed uh, bridge, we need to define the geometry of uh, tendons and we need to calculate uh, its elongation uh, during the pre-stressing and also uh, short time loses. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, assignment which is um, uh, uh, dependent only on the geometry of uh, the tandem. So we created a component which simply calculates uh, these uh, these uh, numbers uh, based on the bridge uh, on the curve uh, geometry. 
and we uh, don't have to care if it's in 3D, 2D, uh, and so on. So that's that's a uh, um, uh, way how Grasshopper can be used for uh, for a specific task. And let's get to a second section, uh, concrete detailing. Well, uh, what are our goals in automation of uh, concrete detailing? Uh, again, it's it's very easy. We feel that. Uh, concrete detailing and drawing reinforcement, it's quite tedious work. Uh, a lot of time is spent on the control uh, and on uh, uh, drawing creation. So we uh, decided that if we design a similar bridge parts, then we should use uh, similar reinforcement uh, shapes uh, and uh, types. And we try to prefabricate a 3D reinforcement of different bridge parts. And we, we know that if we do so, we can keep the drawings actual and parametric as well. How it started? It started with uh, Michal's idea because uh, he was responsible for designing uh, three uh, bridges in one project and all uh, these bridges were very similar. So he decided to create one uh, script uh, and during the definition of, of uh, uh, bridge shape, he also started to defining the uh, rails and uh, shape of reinforcing. And he uh, achieved uh, I'd say the ultimate goal that if he changed the structure uh, shape, the, draw, uh, the reinforcement is uh, changed as well. Uh, so, uh, we find out that this is the way uh, which we would like to go, but we wasn't um, uh, uh, we wasn't uh, 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 happy with with the workflow and how many how many attributes needs to be inserted into Grasshopper. So we upgraded the workflow a little bit, and right now we com combined an Excel uh, spreadsheet where all the attributes of reinforcement is. Uh, is uh, written and defined. Then we have a geometry of, uh, of um, uh, reinforcement and the shape of structure in Grasshopper. In Grasshopper, everything is cooked. It's done in this component. Uh, this component reads the Excel uh, file and uh, sheet and also uh, get as input the shape and rails of reinforcement and together with the names. Uh, where the names, the attributes and geometry is linked. And then everything what is needed for Tecla export is created in this component. So we create the shapes or, or recreate the shapes and rails and also the uh, four types of, uh, of rebar group attributes. Uh, so what we achieve here is that we simplified the workflow. We a little bit altered the Tecla lifelink, but uh, it's, it's, it's uh, better for us. And again, if we keep this workflow uh, and we just update uh, the Excel sheet or update the shape of, uh, uh, of uh, our uh, bridge part, then we know that the drawings which are created in, in Tecla structures can be, uh, can be simply updated and we try it and we, uh, we found out that I, I will say 80%, maybe 90% of the drawing is, is, is uh, correct after the, after the update. And again, uh, we can copy these, uh, these Excels and these uh, uh, scripts from one project to another project. So it saves a lot of time for us. So that's about the reinforcing uh, and uh, third, part of uh, this of the third section of this presentation is about the drawings. Well, uh, it's not so interesting because we, uh, we don't like the drawings at all. Uh, it's not a, 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 it's not a interesting work to do the drawings, but uh, the reality is that we need to deliver the drawings on all the projects. They are still in Czech Republic mandatory. Uh, all the structures are, are built according to drawings, uh, not the models, and all the permits are issued according to the drawings. So we need to uh, to uh, uh, fulfill these 
this uh, demand of reality. But we decided that, again, if we have the model uh, and we need to do the drawings, why not to use the model for the drawings? There were two ways which we uh, could go. First one was to uh, create the, for example, section and views, export them to some, some software which is specialized to produce the drawing uh, like AutoCAD or, or something like uh, this, uh, or, or export our model to Tecla structures and do the drawings there. But the problem is that uh, I think in Czech Republic drawings are uh, out of, there are a lot of details which cannot be done uh, easily in, in Tecla or, or other specialized software. So we decided to use the model and do the drawings uh, on the model uh, right even in the Rhino. Uh, and our goal here is to uh, fasten the drawing production and also remove cat monkey task because uh, if we have the model, why not to use the model to create the drawings and derive all the all the uh, lines and just add uh, uh, dimensions, uh, leaders, elevations, and so on. Sometimes we use Grasshopper uh, to create uh, some schemes, for example, here is a video where uh, where uh, simple schemes are created from the model uh, just by clicking on a button in Grasshopper, and we can use these uh, schemes to to create the drawing. Just at dimensions, at uh, 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 leaders, and so on. But uh, I would like to show you how the drawing uh, look in in a reality, uh, how they are organized. Uh, uh, for drawings and doing drawings, we use a work session function in Rhino. Uh, work sessions are something like uh, references where you can uh, connect uh, multiple 3DM files together and you can turn them on and off. So we have a 3D model of, uh, of a bridge and we would like to create a, a drawing of uh, abutment, a formwork of abutment. So uh, if we go right to the result, to, to a layout, we can see that the drawings uh, are quite detailed. There are multiple sections, uh, views, uh, plans. So on the, there is a title block, uh, then there, is, there are notes, uh, uh, tables, uh, materials, and so on. But how it's it's done, because this is the result. Well, uh, at first we can see that there is a chaos, but uh, it's it's not a chaos; it's organized chaos. And uh, trick is uh, that for each the view or section, we need to create a, a construction plane in which the section is uh, is done. Then we create a uh, name it view. Name it view is a view uh, perpendicular to the construction plane. And then we create a, uh, multiple layer groups. Uh, and each layer group uh, corresponds to one view or one section or, or a plan. So if we turn uh, on all the uh, views except the, the, the group A, then we can see that we have a, a, a correct a correct uh, view of uh, of uh, view A, uh, and everything is uh, derived from the three D model. So I will turn everything off except the abutment. Here, so I will turn off everything except the abutment, and you can see that um, uh, lines are are uh, on on the uh, lines are on the model. Of course, sometimes we need to cheat in the drawing, so we need to add, uh, add uh, um, uh, lines which are not in correct position because we have we have we need to project this this uh, edges to to our uh, construction plane but we can uh, play it with 
Is it, for example, this is the this is the cross section of the abutment, or we can uh, turn on the side view. Uh, and uh, most of the time, we try to derive the key aligns uh, from the from the uh, 3D model, and then just add dimensions, at the elevations, and and uh, nodes and section uh, lines, and so on. It's still a lot of manual work, but we can uh, we are able to help ourselves a little bit. For example, uh, we uh, have a, a number of Rhino commands, which, uh, for example, create this this uh, group. If we define a point at a center plane, uh, then we can. Uh, simply create this group and this group uh, uh, the elevation is calculated according to the point uh, coordinate so we uh, the engineer uh, does not um, uh, doesn't have to care about uh, uh, calculating these elevations and and uh, again it's it's less uh, 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 th there is a less chance to uh, do the errors so that's uh, how the drawings are done. Uh, and uh, finally, if we have all the views, then we need to create uh, the deta details and in detail, simply turn, uh, turn on everything uh, in the layers groups, except the correct, cor correct layer group and set, set the view to uh, the view we need. So that's, that's the, uh, uh, trick how the drawings are done. Uh, uh, they are uh, still a lot of manual work, but it's it's much better than doing doing the drawings uh, uh, somewhere uh, uh, in the X Y plane and calculating everything and so on. So that's the drawing, and uh, let's get back to the presentation. The last uh, last. Uh, uh, Section is about our research and development of, of Grasshopper and Rhino. Well, uh, as you could see, uh, most of our uh, scripts are based on our components, but uh, don't be afraid. Uh, without the coding, you are able to achieve, uh, I, th I think, similar results because you can use, uh, say, the default, default, uh, default uh gas upper components to and achieve the same goal but we do the development for because three three reasons first one is to connect a different softwares there is a lot of, a lot of uh there is a lot of um, connection between different softwares uh, done by uh, others but uh, sometimes we need to connect the softwares in a way we uh we think it's it's better for us or uh, to fulfill our our goal, so we sometimes create uh, uh, our own connections. For example, you, you could see that there is a connection with Excel or our IFC files and formats. Uh, moreover, we uh, know that if we present uh, this, if we present uh, this uh, uh, script to uh, some, let's say, grasshopper beginner or not. Uh, Grasshopper user, uh, he will turn uh, his back on us. Uh, so we try to simplify simplify our scripts to uh, to be uh, better read readable, and we can ma maintain because we uh, maintain the code, not not the scripts itself. And uh, last uh, thing, uh, which is. Uh, I think uh, very important, and it, it's the way uh, we would like to go, is to uh, not just to pass the geometry around around the uh, grasshopper script, but pass the data. So we, uh, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I, I don't like uh, what invented, but we implemented uh, or started to create our own uh, classes uh, within the, the grasshopper. And these classes uh, uh, bear the geometry of different bridge parts and also additional data. And uh, we would like to use the data 
uh, in the future, for example, for filling the IFC uh, non-graphical information, uh, or uh, we uh, can pre, uh, predefine the, the layer rebar names and shapes and rails and wrap it together with, with this definition. And uh, when we need in the code or in the script, we can unwrap uh, this data and use this additional data, for example, to create the reinforcement. And that's, that's again, a step to simplify our workflow. Uh, so uh, that's, that's why we do the uh, coding and development. And for this, we use two uh, programming languages. First one is uh, Python. Uh, Python is done mostly for instant coding into Grasshopper. And uh, if we know that something or some uh, components is uh, good uh, to, uh, to insert them to our plugins, we can uh, we do them in, in C sharp, uh, which from my point of view is, is a better, better approach. So that's all from me today. Thank you for the attention. And uh, I think, I hope that what you saw today uh, is something which can uh, influence you, or maybe it's new and can 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 um, help you in your future work. And I would like to say that uh, if you are a beginner to Grasshopper, uh, and you could see some maybe advanced techniques how to work with Grasshopper, don't be afraid because. We work with Grasshopper for more than I think four, maybe five years right now, and we were at the same beginning, and we start doing things in a simple steps, and then learning uh, new techniques and possibilities, and we work a lot of the dance before we reach uh, this this end. So thank you, and uh, that's that's all for from me. Thank you, Andre. That it's been great. Uh, a lot of examples and. Uh, it was great to to see your your definitions, and yeah, a lot of people were asking about uh, grasshopper courses or introductions. I sent some links, but uh, if you know uh, any other, it would be great. And also, thank you to Michael because he has been as answering all the questions in the chat, so that has been great. We have a new one from Francesco that does what's the process for exporting these models in IFC format. I don't know if you can answer. Uh, well, yeah, well, there is a, uh, there is a C sharp library. It's called XBIM Toolkit, I think, and we simply uh, create our own exporter. So it's it's a it's a component which reads the geometry, then do the meshing of this geometry, and uh, uh, we need to decode how the IFC is written. IFC it's uh, uh, like an organized text file. And uh, this uh, XBIM toolkit can can uh, uh, write this uh, this XML uh, IFC file. So uh, it's done via the, the this library. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was checking here uh, another question that I found interesting that uh, Jacob Grave was asking why do you use Rhino for drawings and not Tecla? And Michael said that uh, you use Tecla for rebar drawings, but yeah, I don't know if you can explain a little bit more why, why do you it, prefer Rhino. It, it, yeah, well, uh, in Czech Republic, we have four stages of a project uh, from the basic uh, design to, to the, the most detailed one. And uh, the reinforcement is included in the last two projects. So we don't need uh, Tecla for let's say the half of the project or, or half of the projects, and the drawings. Uh, well, um, uh, I, I, Rhino for me is Rhino is a good software because it's not a si software for si civil engineering, but it's a very open software and you can you can say, modify the Rhino to uh, fulfill your uh, needs. And in Czech Republic, there are drawings are quite demanding. There need to be a lot of hatches, leaders. Uh, different uh, uh, layer types and so on, and we, we are not able to to do this in Tecla. So that's the reason why do the drawing, why we do the drawings in Rhino. Yeah, and I was thinking that 
yeah, you bake uh, the geometry from Grasshopper to to take the drawings from Rhino, right? Yeah. Maybe that can change with uh, yeah in the Rhino work in progress. You can check that there are uh, some new new uh, data types in Grasshopper for hatches and annotations that maybe are useful to to also automate that part. But yeah, well, well we are a... able to we are able to do do uh, the hatches in Rhino right now. Uh, I, uh, and also the all the line times, but not uh, th th there is not so so many choices as we are used to, for, for example, from Autodesk. But I think it's okay. We need to simplify the drawings as well because it, it's 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 not our part of the yeah. job to uh, create hatches, but it's it's to design. Yeah, yeah. I was just um, trying to to yeah to to reduce this step of having to bake the geometry to to take the drawings. So you can yeah, have we... also the, the the definition of grasshopper uh, to make the drawings, but. Yeah, maybe it's a bit more complex. Yeah, it, it's we try we try to, uh, but it's uh, still a lot of uh, work because, for example, for the dimensions you need to specify uh, yeah. the points and, and distance from the line, and so on. So it's it's a lot of work. Well, I think that's that's all. Robin Jackson was saying thank you. That was cool. I look forward to to learning more. And. Um, yeah, me too. Thank you for this presentation. It was great and a lot of people joined. So thank you to, to everyone for being here. We had more than 100 participants. So I think that has been great. Okay. Thank you for, for the attendance. Thank you. I, I will, well, it has been recorded, so I will upload it to, to YouTube as soon as possible. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Bye-bye.